Okay. We're picking up on verse 9 of chapter 12 <clears throat> and going to the end of the chapter. And we're just whipping through these chapters, too. It looks like 15 is a nice long one, though. That'll last us a while. Um, yeah, I'm thinking three could do it if we want. I'm down. Okay. Then I will pray and let's get started. Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for meeting with us and speaking to us and being in our conversation. Thank you for giving us your heart for everything, for the lost, for how to conduct our own lives. God, I pray you would speak to us and show us something from this passage that we could take away and use today. Thank you, God. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another among you, above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spirit Keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I can take two. Love must be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another with mutual love, showing eagerness and honoring one another. Do not lag in zeal. Be enthusiastic in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, endure in suffering, and persist in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. And do not be haughty, 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 but associate with the lowly. Do not be conceited and do not repay anyone evil for evil consider what is good before all people if possible so far as it depends on you live peaceably with all people do not avenge yourselves dear friends but give place to God's wrath for it is written vengeance is mine I will repay says the Lord rather if your enemy is hungry feed him if he's thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing this, you will be heaping burning coals <laughs> on his head, and do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. John, you or me? Um, you. <laughs> I'll hear your translation. Mine is the only translation. It's NAS. 
Nass. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge. Be love, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. One thing that kind of hit hard to me was bless and do not curse. <clears throat> I tend to get a little bit caustic when I'm getting into arguments with people. <clears throat> well, I'm glad I don't ever do that. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a whole bunch of things in this list that were written specifically for me. <clears throat> I just think to myself, man, what would my life be like if I did all of these things? That'd be crazy. Yeah. I feel like I'd kind of be like Jesus. <laughs> I mean, not in like a haughty way but like just like seems like this is the embodiment of him like all of these things another thing that stood out was the end of verse 16 it's be willing to associate with people of low position yeah you say that because you're six foot nine. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't <laughs> No, it stood out to me. My dad had a story from his old job where he was like a higher up engineer. Um, and he told me once that he purposely went and talked to like the solder techs down on the floor making the circuit boards because he wanted to just get to know him. He didn't want, he didn't want to be like, the MBA that's way up at the top and all they do is sit in their little cubicle watching stock tickers and that kind of thing. It's like, no, I will walk down there and chat it up with the gal that's fixing the board that I requested a fix for. And it was just, that always impressed me. Well, to remember it, it must have. Right. It must have made an impact. Right. <clears throat> I feel like that's something I struggle with at work. And I think in my life in general, like I, I have a tendency to kind of gravitate towards the leaders and the, you know, the, and, and l less of a tendency to gravitate towards people who don't have influence or those sort of things. Yeah. It's a temptation. I think that I have that I, I don't know if I would have it's probably a blind spot but when I read this it's like oh lord you're you just illuminated that in me I 
His word is a light to my path. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like this entire section could be my own like work mantra. I could print out the entire thing and wow, thumbtack it to my office wall oh my just gosh. to remind myself. Totally. <clears throat> I mean, probably because that is where I have the most direct conflict with people, you know. What do you guys think about the heap, the burning coals on his head? It seems like, like when I read that, I was like, everything else is like, you know, serve and give and bless, don't curse and feed your enemy and blah, you know, it's like, but like that line feels like, it's like, yeah, take that, you know, it feels like totally, it totally goes against everything else that was just previously said. It's like, you know, you're really going to get him and piss him off if you're nice to him yeah like that feels like that doesn't feel like the spirit of this reading but you, how did you do that you gave him food when he was hungry and you gave him drink when he was thirsty but is that our goal to to get back at him by pissing him off by being nice that's what it I, feels like it's saying to me i don't know like the motive there feels like tainted Yeah, I can't turn that into a positive concept by throwing briquettes on your head. Uh, it feels like it feels like revenge to me. Um, almost like passive aggression. And I know there's probably a a um, what's the word a, a interpretation of this that's probably different than that, but. We could ask the internet. That's what I'm trying to do, but the all-knowing oh, Oracle. I've got a lot of cross references, and I'm not quite pulling out <clears throat> the quick answer. What does heap burning coals on someone's head mean from the Bible? I heard something like. It was uh, some sort of a blessing or a good thing, biblically, once. Hmm. Um, so this is also found in Proverbs 25. The meaning of the proverb is often understood as an encouragement to treat one's enemies with kindness. The burning coals are thought to symbolize shame or remorse that an enemy will feel when responded to with unexpected kindness. Oh. Instead of seeking revenge, one is advised to show love and kindness, which can lead the adversary to a state of self-reflection and possibly repentance. Leading to peace and reconciliation. It also is in keeping with the teaching of loving one's neighbor. So it's it's a it symbolizes, I guess, remorse or guilt. Them feeling like kind of aware, I guess, and repenting maybe. Burning coals. Huh. I wonder if that's like. <clears throat> I know that there's like the burning coals in, is it Isaiah? Like when he has the vision or Elijah, one of the prophets had the vision of the coals yes. touching the lips. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that makes a little Isaiah. bit more sense and it's worth writing that word at the end of that verse for future memory reference. So it's in Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. 
<laughs> it purifies the mouth. <laughs> That's what the that's what the coal of God's fire does in that in that context. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a man of unclean lips, okay? Shh. Okay, now you're clean. Go and preach. Hmm, it's like a cleansing. That's in Revelation too, isn't it? Is it? I think so. Hmm. Well, and I I looked up Proverbs twenty five read it there, it had another cross-reference to Psalm 18, 8. And I'll read 7 as well. The earth trembled and quaked, quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning, coal, burning coals blazed out of it. Wow. So like the coals are coming from his mouth. So now, Damien, if you read 20, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will shame him. So now it makes a little bit more sense. It does. So thanks for questioning that. It, and it kind of actually does relate to Isaiah and the coals there. See, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. So it's like a, a purifying agent cleansing his sins. So these, these, coal, these coals that are on his head, it's almost like they, they also have a purifying agent kind of a, a cleansing type of um, effect on the person because they'll have they'll become aware of their own sin and shame right and guilt mm -hmm. hmm. okay heat burning coals what does proverbs 25 say Okay. Oh, interesting. He has a lot more metaphors. <clears throat> we'll say that like again. A bat. <clears throat> There's a lot more metaphors flanking the, the this passage in Proverbs. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is reliance on the unfaithful in times of trouble. Like the one who takes away a garment on a cold day or like vinegar poured on soda is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Whoa. Oh. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on this on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Phew. Wow. Oh. I won't go until 24 where it says, better to live in the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. <laughs> Uh, it's better to live on the corner of the housetop <laughs> than in a house in company with a quarrelsome wife. On the corner of a housetop, huh? Man, that's pretty exposed and uncomfortable. Proverbs are crazy. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable for people to seek their own glory. Well, that's funny. I was eating honey last night with the pizza. Hmm. I put a whole bunch of honey on the pizza crust. <laughs> well, then if you go back to 16. It says, if you find honey, eat just enough, too much of it, and you will vomit. Oh, I feel Lord. like these are... I mean, my Bible says chapter 25 is titled More Proverbs of Solomon. I think this is more like we could rename it Random Thoughts, <laughs> Rand, Random Axioms that Solomon had. 
Oh, here's a good one for uh, for our current days with social media. 26-6. <clears throat> like cutting off the feet or drinking violence, so is sending a message by the hand of a fool. Think about all the flaming that happens on social media. Everybody Say attacking. Everybody attacking each other on social media. Like cutting off the feet or drinking violence, so is sending a message by the hand of a fool. Hmm. Oh my God, the Bible is so rich. There's so much here. It's like, wow, Lord. Whew. <clears throat> Verse 18 is another challenge that's extremely hard to to accomplish and comprehend. Back in Romans? Yeah. Okay. I'm going back. If possible, be as so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. That's that's pretty difficult. I mean, there are people that annoy me. There are people that have offended me. There are people that have cheated me. And I realize it gives you a disclaimer there that as far as possible, but still, that's a, that's a difficult challenge. That it depends on us and what we do to live at peace with everyone. Hmm. Yeah, like there's two sides of a relationship. And both sides require something, but we can do our part on our side. Is that what you're saying, Sean? Yeah. Well, and, and even like, it's like, yeah, we have to do our part. If they do do their part, it's not possible for us to control how much peace they keep. Mm. But we can keep the peace. Yeah. I mean, if you try to meet them halfway and they don't meet you halfway, well, at least half the distance has been already taken up, so... I have a hard time, like, as it pertains to my en my enemies, right? I have a hard time balancing that with, <clears throat> like, the way it's described here. Love your enemies. Feed them. Um, bless them. Uh, you know, do all these things for them. Serve them. But then the whole thing about boundaries, like, what... Like where, like how do you balance that? Like healthy boundaries with someone who it maybe is hurtful or toxic or whatever versus like loving and serving them. Is this saying that like, don't worry about that. God will take care of that. Or is does, elsewhere does it talk in the Bible? Does it talk about boundaries to help balance this? Hmm. It's a good, it's a really good question. I think the way that I'm still interpreting it is like we do our part. We can't control what they do. All right. And so as long as we're doing our part, that's kind of like going back to the it heaps burning coals on their head and maybe that'll kind of push them to do their part. Mm -hmm. Well, like Daniel said, you go halfway. How many times do you go halfway? I mean, what is that Greek um, philosophy of going halfway? That Zeno's a, paradox. That's Zeno's paradox. It's a Greek philosophy, eh? It's a Greek philosophy. You'll never be able to walk out of the room if you just go forward by half the distance and if then half the distance halfway. and then half the distance. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I mean, Jesus talks about like turning the other cheek and if they ask for your cloak then give them your shirt also and 
I mean, he, he see, seems to suggest, like, someone's taking advantage of you, then give them even more. Like, now, Matthew 18, 15 through 17, involves confronting a person who sinned against you. And if they don't listen, take witnesses. So holding people accountable in truth. And 2 Thessalonians tells the community to keep away from any believer who is idle and disruptive, but not to regard them as an enemy, but to warn them as a brother. So I guess that's a boundary passage. Hmm. It's probably a case-by-case -case basis sort of thing. Maybe the Lord just gives guidance, you know. Because there's also how many proverbs, how many other passages where it's like, do not associate with evil people. Mm. Just don't even go there mm. sort of deal. And it, I think it warns because they will influence you to fall into the same patterns as them. Yeah. It's the conforming thing. Do not conform to this world like we read yesterday, right? right? Or right. day before. Yesterday, I think. A lot I of think, stuff in there. I think the letter of that, though, like the letter versus the spirit, the letter was intended to keep the, the Jewish people as a co cohesive unit through thousands of years so that the Messiah could spring forth from them. And so maybe that verse is more of like a, a thing for them, you know, and then, but we take it, but it applies to us in a way that it's the spirit of the law, which is not conforming to this world. So be among them, but don't be like them. Because Jesus, I mean, he showed us that he he hung out with sinners all the time, but he didn't become like them in doing so. He just did the opposite. Well, gents, it's seven o'clock. I got to get rolling. It is. Oh, right. You have a hard stop. All right. Uh, let's wrap it up then. <laughs> Lots of think about I'm definitely gonna keep reminding myself of this throughout the day I think and maybe even do that printout idea that I had <laughs> that's a good idea anybody feeling led to pray I will okay Lord thanks for this day um you for speaking to us and illuminating <laughs> our the struggles lord in our our flesh you know that we we carry day to day and don't we don't hit the mark like there's lots of stuff here lord that's convicting and um lord i ask that you would fill us with your spirit remind us to keep our eyes on you and when we do these things just naturally flow from us and we don't have to try. Lord, thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit in us that changes us and transforms us into your likeness, Jesus. We bend our knee to you today. Surrender our lives, our minds, our hearts, our bodies to you. For your kingdom, your glory. Thank you for this word. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Love you. Love you guys. Love you. Have a See great ya. day, everybody. Have a good you day. You too.